Thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, welcome to the Conservation Commission meeting of Monday, March 6, 2023. Uh, we'll be having the meeting is being held in person and via Zoom at the Gala Meeting Room Town Hall. Um, for uh, information for the Zoom, you can go to Foxborough Gov Department of Conservation and click Public Remote Participation. Um, this meeting will be also broadcast live on Foxborough Cable Access TV channel 22 slash 38. And well, again, welcome. All right. Yep. Uh, Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. I move that the commission convene an executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21, uh, subsection A3, for the purpose of discussing a litigation strategy with respect to wetlands violations and enforcement proceedings relative to the property at 20 Ridge Road, Foxborough. Uh, with the chair having declared that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the commission. So by one second that second it. discussion all in favor aye. and aye. we aye. have to do it by roll call no. uh, Rich Galimi aye Jeff Ams aye aye and chairman aye and you do you do need to mention that you will reconvene an open session at the conclusion of the executive session okay we will resume open after the conclusion of the executive session all right the Commission's public meeting is back in order and we're back on the air. So uh, it's all going over cable access. Um, it's been 7.05, we have a request. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, Wetlands Protection Act, and Foxborough's Wetland Protection Bylaw, Chapter 267, the Conservation Commission will open a public meeting on Monday, March 6, 2023, at 7.05 p.m. in the Gala Meeting Room, Foxborough Town Hall, 40 South Street, and via Zoom on a request for determination of applicability filed by Hockamock YMCA for the expansion of an existing wellness facility at 67 Mechanic Street, Assessor's Map 068, Parcel, 038 within 100 feet of a wetland resource area. The application is available for inspection at the office. Mr. Buckley. Uh, Mr. Chairman, excuse me, one second. <clears throat> so good evening. Thank you for the record. My name is Bill Buckley from Bay Colony Group, and I'm here representing the applicant, the Hockamock Area YMCA. With me this evening also is Bob Bunstan. He's the um, facilities director for the the, uh, for the entire Hockamock YMCA um, region. And what we have before the commission is to ask for a request for, file a request for determination of applicability for a construction of a splash park area and uh, you know, four square hopscotch uh, pickleball basketball court area. And what this area is is, well, let me just give a little history. So that we've been before the commission in the past, most recently back in 2010, to construct the outdoor pool known as the Spear Family Aquatic Center. And at that time, <clears throat> the proposal was to build the pool, which has been built since then, and then next to it on the basketball court area, it was gonna remain partially a basketball court, um, but the splash park was also going to be built at that time. So the pool was completed, the, the buildings were completed, but the, um, the splash park was never done. It was just at the time it was a funding issue. Um, so we've, we came before, or we appeared before the commission a couple of weeks ago, it was either two or four weeks ago, I think it was four, um, to talk about perhaps modifying the existing order of conditions um, to allow that. And then at that time, you know, the, because that order of conditions had, been exp had expired, um, we talked about how to proceed because we'd never received a certificate of compliance for that 2010 order. And then subsequent to that, there'd be some additional work done out there that had never been brought before the commission. 
So at the time we discussed it, and because the work being proposed this evening is all work that is only in areas that have been disturbed, specifically the existing um, basketball court, it is in a riverfront area, it is in buffer zone, but the area we're talking about is the basketball court. It's basically pavement. So um, we decided at that time that it may be appropriate to file a request for determination to appear before the commission. So what I've put up for you right now is a plan that, let me just kind of walk you through it. So if you are coming in to the Y, the driveway is up here in this corner, coming in from Mechanic, and then you'd go this way, and the building itself is over in this direction. So this area right now, this is the existing um, basketball court, and it's, it's fenced in. Here's the existing pool with the concrete area. This is the changing bathroom building in this area here. And the back here is the mechanical space for the, um, the pool. So as I stated before, what we're proposing is to take the existing paved area, uh, which is the basketball court, and take about half of it and turn it into a splash park. And I'll, in a moment here, I'll try again to put up a drawing um, that gives you some feel for what the splash park looks like. But then in the, the rear of the, um, toward the rear, this will remain a basketball court. It will remain a four square hopscotch area. It says pickleball. And the reality is, is, you know, we can stripe it however we want. It's just gonna be, continue to be paved as it is. And then around the outside, which it currently is today, what we're proposing is just landscaping, um, grassing along the area. This will be a grass patio. There's already some trees up here. Um, they'll remain and we put, we're gonna be putting some additional plantings along the front here. So let me just get out of this for a second. Hopefully see if I can bring up this, this other um, drawings that gives you a feel for what it will look like. The splash box renderings. This is a good one. Hope it comes up. Nope. Try it again. Nope. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what I did. There it is. There we go. That's the ticket. So, so this is kind of what it will look like. It's just a rendering. Um, it, you know the exact configuration. This could not be it, but you get a feel for it. It's it's for little kids. It's a little kid's thing. It's water squirting out of the ground, etc. There's a you know there's some questions earlier about how it's maintained. It's just like um, kind of like a pool. There is a there's an underground tank where the water goes into it. It recycles it. If the water is chlorinated, um, when it comes time that it has to be um, backwashed, what happens is is it's it'll be tied to the mechanical system. In the mechanical building there, it's chemically treated to take the chlorine out of it, and then it's discharged into the um, existing stormwater basin, which if you were driving into the site before you get to the building on the right, that's the basin It's pretty much hidden now after you know 13 years of growth. Um, but it doesn't just discharge into the parking lot or anything like that. It goes, it's mostly recycled, and then when it has to be um, replenished, it's chemically treated and then infiltrated back into the ground through that basin. Let me go back um, to the other build, the other plan. So while you're doing that, are the plans that you provided for today the same as the ones we looked at in yes. January? Okay. Yes. We haven't changed that. And, and the, the critical one, the first one I gave you was the existing conditions plan. Um, and then the second one is the actual building itself or the site plan, two of two. And then I gave you a third plan which showed what was proposed back in 2010, so you can kind of get a feel for what was going to be there and what we're proposing today. So um, that's it for that, and that maybe I'll just touch upon the existing order of conditions, um, which again is, is, an, is an expired order. We did a site walk today, been a lot of work done outside of any um, permits issued by the commission. So, you know, what we were 
proposing was, you know, how do we get this thing um, in compliance? And so um, I'm, I'm not going to speak for Jane, but I got a great email from Jane this afternoon putting her thoughts into it, and I agree with them um, how to proceed with it. Instead of extending an expired order, you know, I would say that we're fine with doing an enforcement order and then us preparing a plan to show what's actually there and not just in this area, but out in the, the woods between the Ahern School and between the, the, um, the driveway. We can show all of that. We will get a, a wetland, a botanist in there to look at the wetland line so we can get that on there as well. Um, and then try and uh, bring before the board a plan that completes the restoration that was proposed during the 2010 filing, which had to do with with plantings along the river um, river bank, and then also taking care of an additional things that we talked about today, which had to do with some uh, erosion coming off the driveway into the um, the Robinson Brook, as well as the um, I mean, there's a, there's, a, there's a bridge there now. There's a metal bridge that goes there. There's some man-made debris that's in the river now that needs to be cleaned up. There's some trash that needs to be cleaned up. So a lot of that is in the um, original order. And then, we, then there's some additional stuff that we have to deal with, which is the, the, um, the adventure park, which I guess yeah, what you call yeah. it, which is out there now. Camp park. Camp park. And all of that stone dust that we were walking through. That stone dust will be brought up um, to be remediated as well. So uh, I, okay, going back to the, on the expired order of conditions, um, how do you propose closing that out, or do we have to close that out? Well, I, I like Jane's idea, if you want to just jump on that. You know, the idea of a... Enforcement. Yeah, enforcement and restoration order. As you all know, the Rivers Protection Act protects riverfront areas 200 feet worth, with the first 100 feet being a no disturb area. Um, a lot of this predated that, I'm assuming. I wasn't involved back then. But one thing that um, redevelopment regulations require under the Rivers Protection Act is that you don't get any closer to the river then currently um, exists, um, but you can mitigate and restore portions of it. So um, I asked Bill to, I sent him my history document because I was trying to get myself up to speed. So I looked at the old minutes and such. And um, so if he could see what was, you know, the original order, what it had, what was proposed, then there was an amendment, and I know that they, um, the commission requested impervious surface calculations and things like that. Um, you may want to make as much of that impervious surface currently pervious. It might work to your benefit. But um, so if we can put all our duckies in a row and figure out what was promised what was done, what was omitted, what the percent of riverfront in the 100 and the 200 foot is, and then there's some horrible regulations for redevelopment that need to be complied with. So it'll take a little bit of homework, so that's why I asked you to do it. Um, and you said enforcement order, but we would probably want an enforcement and restoration order. So once once you have the specifics, I could plug them in and figure out, you know, what restoration requirements there are. And because you can't do an after the fact notice of intent because it's not good practice. And an order from an after the fact notice of intent when a wetlands violation is found can be appealed. So it's, it can, it can end, you can end up chasing your tail. So the enforcement and restoration order is a good vehicle for getting things done. So did I cover everything, Bill? I think so. So we would be, you know, filing the enforcement and restoration order. We would make the changes to bring it into compliance with the 2010 order. And then we would 
We would issue the enforcement and, and, and restoration order. You would issue that. And you would kind of feed me the pieces. Right. Uh, yeah, we would work together on it, absolutely, and the Y understands. And then we need to bring it into compliance, but, but it's, I think it's going to go beyond that because, we're, because of the, because the additional work. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So I think once important. we get everything done, it will all be kind of come together, and at that point, we can come back to the board, the commission, and ask for a certificate of compliance for the 2010 order. In addition to all the additional work we have to do um, to deal with the, the additional alteration that was done subsequent to that. Area and all. Yeah. Bill, I think the reason that the certificate of compliance was not issued was um, there hadn't been the required um, reporting, like yearly reporting by a wetland botanist or whatever, the restoration person. And um, I had been working with Briscoe Lang of Parkour, and I suspect that was around the time that he became ill and a lot of things maybe went by the boards. But, um, you know, the old requirements, you know, the requirements of it needs to have this, this, and this reported and photos and such. I don't believe we ever received that sort of thing. Yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't recall. I went back through the reg. I went back through all my documents like you did. And um, I, I really don't know how it just kind of died. Yeah, I think there were big projects going on at the same time, so I probably kind of dropped into oblivion. Um, but I do recall meeting with Briscoe and being under impressed by the restoration. Okay. Well, we'll take care of that this time going forward. And I know that we, David, we were out there today, and David wanted some additional work done. So we'll, you know, this is not going to be something that's going to be, I think we're, we're going to end up coming back talking to you, talking to the commission, maybe coming back informally one more time with a, with a plan, maybe another walk, you know, whatever needs to be done so we can get, and then, you know, I, we want to get this done quickly because as we're doing this, we want to, we'll have everybody, and then we have a, a, a camp at, in June, right? Yeah, so we run a, a five to 600 kid camp um, during the summer, and that's kind of, how that area came about is we, we, we grow every year between 50 to 100 kids. Um, so we service the the Foxborough, the greater Foxborough area with the camp. And uh, that area is used majority, you know, with the camp from June to September. So. A big part of this is, is educating the public about what is and is not allowed and why. I mean, it's not just to be annoying it's oh, to yeah, protect no. <laughs> water quality yep. and I think the kids learning about that kind of stuff would be really helpful too yep. you know this is a river why are rivers important and if you can if you could put that in with your little curriculum that might oh we can yeah good. we look for different things all the time um, you know and the, the outside classroom and that kind of stuff is so popular right now you know with our with our child care and with our camp so yeah well we, when you have your beautiful new native plant restoration buffer along the riverfront and do a little guided which tour. supplies yeah. all sorts of habitat to birds and other critters there you go um, and rivers are wildlife corridors and that's why they did the rivers protection act because they yep. found that they're really so critical but you know we like to Natural see filter. net environmental benefit and uh, you know make lemonade out of lemons we just we just want Waking it's all about that. education yep. really no, it yeah, really is yeah. yeah Jane for your information when we walked out there <clears throat> we uh, need to expand the restoration up river up the brook that further. would be nice be up to I, the I believe it where the driveway is that goes into the camp uh -huh. it's getting pre it's a well-loved area yeah but it's getting eroded where the you're getting silt into the brook well and so. also one of the reasons for a vegetated buffer zone which we've been harping on a lot with native plants is not only does it provide wildlife habitat and food for critters and such and people um, but it also holds the um, banks together and prevents erosion and you know the silt and such that can wash into the river so it's it cleanses the water on the way through and such so um, you have yourself a little, uh, you know, a little beautiful kind of uh, yeah, well, look how yep. look how great we're doing natural, here. Uh, and, yeah, natural up area. Yeah, it is, it's, it's it's overgrown now. It's you know there's. I remember there's a, lot a lot of, of invasives. You know, yeah, there is. Uh, 
And if, you, if I look back, and the, my predecessor had encouraged you all not to cut along the river, which sounds like a good idea, but unfortunately in disturbed areas, a lot of times you get a lot of invasive plants that yeah. are really not so hot. So it, it'll end up looking nice, and you can add a little curriculum about we're, we're rivers okay and no buffer zones and native plants. Yep. And, mm -hmm. So, Bob, yeah. we got the issue is that we got a request for a determination mm -hmm. versus the issue of doing the yes. recommendation yes. of the enforcement restoration yeah. mm -hmm. order, yeah. which I think you'd be putting that together. Initially. Yeah, we're trying to fashion this so it all works together because yeah. they need right. to get this done. It had but, been approved before, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But, but we as need far to, as the determination, I think right. we can sign off on that tonight. Right, yeah. and what I wrote was um, under the determination for a project description and I incorporated it into the conditions, negative, the negative determination conditions. Um, I put the project was the construction of a modified splash park, blah, 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 within the riverfront area in an existing basketball court. And then I said, per 310 CMR 1058-5C, the proposed work within the 200-foot riverfront area shall not be located closer to the river than existing conditions. In addition, and I added this part, the previously proposed restoration area shall be re-inspected and restored per the site's amended order of conditions for DEP 157-489. So basically for number five, negative determination, um, since the work described herein meets requirements, blah, 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 um, no notice of intent is required unless and until said work alters an area subject to protection under the act. And it's, it's similar for the bylaw as well. All right. So somebody want to make a motion? Is that saying they have to do some of the restoration besides walking it? That's the next step. No, no, but is that saying that they have to do it? Because we didn't want them to do it until they, oh, they have get to, the whole place. You know, come in with a plan for the whole Yeah, they place. need to come in with a plan and stuff. So after this, this will allow them to get their splash park done in the area that's already disturbed. And then the enforcement and restoration plan might encourage um, either a widening or an enlarging somehow of the um, buffer zone, which is the restoration area. And uh, you'll you'll get benefit from that as, as well as the water quality and such. So that's a two-step process. Right. So Bill's going to review my history document. He's going to say, "Well, we said we'd do this, but we did this. Um, we didn't complete this, and we, you know, because we didn't have the money." And da da da. You know, you can make it short and sweet, pretty much. And then just comply with the riverfront regulations for redevelopment because it's previously altered. <laughs> Can I make a recommendation, Bob? What's that? That when you look at uh, Bill's plan, the pitch of the basketball court, hopscotch area, is still pitching down to that corner. Mm -hmm. And he should at least add another protection of soap, the uh, soap things, to stop that faster runoff going down Ooh, on that maybe, side. Maybe you can amend it a little bit so that it's going to have more um, low impact Buffer development area. techniques. You're talking oil? about the silt sock? Silt sock, yeah. The silt sock is actually, Bob's already put it in. It's already stretched down to here. We, we saw it today. Yes. Right. Yeah. yeah there's 360 feet of uh, silt yeah. sock that we put along the river. And he put, it, he put it along here. He went all the way up here and then ran it through here. So it's not just this. But what runoff were you talking about, David? Well, the corner of the existing paved area, where it actually the volume of the, the amount of water, it just put something in there just to cut down that velocity coming across before it hits the other sock. So just basically where he has that uh, silt sock now, if I yep. put an additional row of silt sock there, yeah, just around that corner where you can see where it pours off. Could he make a permanent yeah, correction why, why to that area? Why don't you want to make a permanent adjustment to that? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Well, that, well again, that'd be up to them to... Well, maybe that could be incorporated Change into the, the restora restoration. enforcement and restoration. Because, yeah. like I said, net and but yeah. environmental then, Remember, benefit. though, you know, it's a basketball court. There's no cars on it. There's no oil. There's no greases. There's none of that. So it's not, you know, the stuff that we normally worry about when we're dealing with parking lots. We're not... It's just erosion, really. Yeah, that's really all we're worried about. Yeah. And the water has to go somewhere. Yeah. So, 
I think when you probably get that um, stone dust out of there and get grass in there, that will alleviate a lot of that. Um, but that's not going to be part of this work. They but want to concentrate on the on the uh, on the splash facilities. park. Yeah. Yes. Where was but the stone dust that you're talking about? I didn't. The whole stone. Out. There's gravel. There's a whole driveway of. There's driveway the here. And was that something that was approved in the no. past? No. 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 All right. So then that's one of the things that you'll say. That's you know, right. That we put this in and we're going to do this instead to make the stormwater. Yeah. Maybe adjust the um, level of the you well, know, grades a little bit there. We know we have to address erosion and we'll. Or swale or something. That'll be part of it. We'll yeah. figure that out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're just doing this stop gap to, uh, to get this uh, splash park in, but yeah. we can fix things up. Yes. Right. Just name for the record, please. Brian Cassie, uh, Cocasa Street. When you restore this native vegetation, um, make it stipulation for. Uh, cleaning up the invasives in the future because they're called invasives for a reason. Sorry, okay. sir, you need to come to the microphone. It says we're on the air. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you didn't know this, but that's what they were supposed to do before. Right. But, okay. But, Let's start from the beginning. Since. Right. Fine. Brian Cassie. And um, when I'm asking that when you make a plan to restore native vegetation, you also include in the plan. Uh, stipulation that people come and deal with the invasives because they're called invasive species for a reason. Mm -hmm. They will definitely invade the area and the whole place will look exactly the way it looks now. If you don't put, it's just, I'm just asking if you put a stipulation in. That's what we Pro usually it's do. It's probably part of the, we usually do that. Of the plan, but it is. Yeah. Okay. It is. Yeah, that's I didn't hear anything list. about that, yeah. so that's why. It's high on our list, yes. Oh, very good. Okay. Excellent. Any other comments from the audience? Uh, did I hear a motion? Anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to issue a negative determination. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Number five and six is rep as read. Yes. And six yep. A as well. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Being 710, we have uh, 61 East Belcher Road, a continuation on DP, DEP 157620. Mr. Gray. <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. For the record, my name is Cameron Gray. I'm here tonight on behalf of our client, Blue Diamond, to uh, continue the discussion for the notice of intent that was submitted for our project at 61 East Belcher Road. So just to refresh everyone, our client is proposing the construction of a commercial facility along with the associated parking, grading, and utilities, a portion of which will lie in the buffer zone. So since our last meeting, we have submitted a, a revised um, site plan as a result of a discussion with the board. So the big change is we basically picked up the full site. So, I mean, the building, parking area, and stormwater basin and we shifted it to the southwest here. So if I could share my screen, I'll show. Okay. So this was our original site plan that we submitted. So it's kind of tough to see, but we're basically right up against the wood, the wood line. The existing wood line is right here. So you can see our stormwater basin is entirely within the woods. 
the parking areas within the buffer zone here. So I'll switch to our revised site plan. So you can see we pulled the stormwater basin further to the southwest along with the parking and building. So the parking area is no longer within that 100 foot buffer zone. It will just now be the stormwater basin. And by doing that change, we preserved about 2,600 square feet of buffer zone. And we'll also be able to preserve a lot more of the existing vegetation out there. And aside from those changes, just physically moving the location of the building, parking area, and stormwater basin, there's been no other changes to the site plan. I don't believe we have anything else to add to that. <clears throat> Who yep. was on the second site walk out there? I was on the first one. Myself, Peter, and David. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do you have any comments? No, I mean, it's, I know, um, the, you know, this is basically, I mean, it, I know there was a discussion about moving the parking area to the other side of the building. Um, I'm not sure how practical that was, but the moving it away from, Farther away from the woods and you know retaining a lot more of that vegetation was mm -hmm. the, was the ask. Okay. So you, it's it's you know there's a lot of disturbed area down there right now anyway. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know in in what would be called the, in the, the buffer zone so the debris and stuff. So. Did you tell him that was my suggestion? Did you tell no. Okay. You know that it, it'd be better off and pulling it into the area that's already disturbed mm -hmm. instead of uh, you know even though it's a small amount of buffer area. Half it was uh, cut, but at least we preserved more of it. So if I could add to that, like, so we reviewed this and we thought about flipping the parking area like the board recommended, but this piece right here is a big piece of ledge right there. So in order for us to flip the parking over there, it would require a client to do a lot more extensive removal with that ledge here. So we felt that the best option was to just basically pick up the full site and move it to the southwest. So that way we're able to preserve more of that buffer area and basically preserve that vegetation, which I think was the end goal. Jane, any comments or? Yeah, no. I didn't go in the second one. Okay, all right. Peter, this is Peter. Peter. I think that was are a good, you still on, was a good Peter? compromise. Yeah, so can you hear me? I can hear you. Speak up a little bit. Yep. Sure. So I think that was a good compromise what they did. Uh, they basically took what David said, and obviously for the reasons of the ledge, couldn't do it fully, but, you know, compromised and pulled it in, which was kind of the direction we were trying to go. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any comments from the audience? I have no idea what this project is, sir. <laughs> okay. That's my comment. What is well, the project? Is that, am I too late to ask that question? Never too late. We haven't closed it yet. It's a warehouse on 61 East Belcher, uh -huh. up on Foolish Hill, basically. A warehouse to house what? I don't know if they know what it's going to be used for for sure yet. Um, so our client is a contractor, so if you go out to this site, he uses it as an equipment annex, so it would be to house some of his commercial equipment as well as any materials that he has. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is part of a larger project, isn't it? It's going to be considered one parcel? Yeah, so we did all together as one site plan. So we're just discussing up here in the Wetland Protections Act but our client acquired this rear parcel also. <clears throat> but that's yet to be. Yeah, yeah, so we're identified. currently going to planning board for the site plan approval. Okay. All right. Anything else? No. I oh. still, hmm? I still bring up the question can we actually make a decision on this or issue an order when the lot is in violation of other bylaws? What bylaw? 
well, the earth removal, removal bylaw, um, by allowing this activity. Well, it's within the 100 foot buffers. Within the 100 foot area. I think that's a, a legal type of question or council question. So I think my answer is, is what we talked about before is everybody has their piece of the pie. Your piece of the pie is the Wetlands Protection Act. Planning Board has site plan approval. Selectmen have um, earth <laughs> removal. So everybody's got their piece of the pie. And if, we, if, the, if, if the answer is, well, we can't move forward because you don't have that part of it, <laughs> everybody could use that answer and you never move forward. So somebody has to go first. Um, sometimes we come before the commission and ask you to go first. Sometimes we ask the planning board to go first. Um, in this particular case, you're, you're, we're moving everybody in parallel, which is the best way to do things. So we're, we, you're tonight, and we would ask you to close it, unless there's some issues that we need to deal with. Planning board is Thursday night. We expect them to close it because we've already re received a verbal from their consultant that we we're good. We just had to make some changes, which were the changes that we made for this commission. So we're waiting for their consultant to come back and say, yeah, you're all right for stormwater. Um, and as far as earth removal, you know, we still have to go through that. If we do earth removal, earth removal is de defined as moving the earth from the site. If we don't take anything off the site, we don't have to do earth removal. So we might still end up not doing earth removal. Right now we are planning it. But so I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but that's what... It, we, I've always heard, actually, I don't think I told you the joke the last time, it was Eric Avedon, chairman of the Board of Health forever. That was his thing. Well, somebody's got to go first, so we'll go first on this one. So that's just what I would ask the commission to consider is, is somebody's got to go first. You still have yet to make comment, which Jane did already. She made comments to the planning board um, on, on the commissions and her concerns. And you can also make comments to the board of selectmen because they'll be asking for your comments for earth removal, but earth removal's pretty cut and dried. It's, you know, you have to meet these criteria, public safety, it has mostly to do with public safety, not so much with um, wetlands protection stuff that you're, you're concerned with. I think what he's talking about is all of the alterations within the 100 foot buffer zone that were done without any wetlands permit and um, They've taken a lot of dirt out of there already, and we have people telling us about that. But um, again, for the stormwater, are they using that, um, what is it, S, um, higher stormwater of higher pollution potential usages or something, because they're going to be storing all of their construction equipment, leaky construction equipment out there? That have those been added to the calculations? Uh, no, they have not. And uh, y yes, they have. So sorry, I, mean, I don't want to be. I hate to do that. <laughs> so what they are is it, it's it's a one inch. You have to go with a one inch storm, which we have, right? Yeah, for, for. And the other thing is there are certain criteria that you have to deal with. So they say you have to deal with. So for example, they want you to use um, deep sum catch basins. Uh, infiltration basins, and those are the type of activities that we do use. So it's called land use for higher potential. Yeah, WHPPP or something like right. that. It's standard, what is it, standard eight or something like that? Right, and then, and then, and then again, the, the town's consultant has reviewed that stuff. And we expect a verbal back from them. Okay. No, I'm sorry. Oh, this is for you. It's a pretty enforcement. Yeah. So, so I want to make a motion to close the hearing. I'll, I'll make a motion to close the hearing for 61 East Belcher Street, DEP 157620. Second. Discussion? All in favor? All right. Thank you. Opposed? None. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we have. Uh, uh, DEP 157617 to Washington Street.
Uh, yeah. The applicant has requested a withdrawal without prejudice <coughs> for this filing. <coughs> so I want to make a motion on that. Still in. Make a motion to withdraw to uh, DEP number 157-617. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. None. Okay. David, got some minutes, or you want to? We have. Um, <clears throat> I'll just get gentlemen. Oh, okay. Are you the public comment? Hi. Are you the public comment? Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Carter, you can speak anytime you want. <laughs> I just have. What I'm, what I'm hoping you agree with me, it's a clean-up detail. Uh, could you just give us your name for the record? My name is Joseph Carter. Okay. I live at 11 <laughs> Daniel Carpenter Court, and of which I'd just like to leave these pictures with you. During the last seven years, at the, the end uh, of tree Daniel, department, tree. Yeah. The, the tree department has come and did their cutting of fallen trees and whatnot. However, that's they're still here, which these pictures will show you. Mm. They, so they cut them, but then they left them behind. And it was uh, seven years ago, maybe to this month, the Boy Scouts were going to be let out to uh, the, the Conservation Homestead on Lot Street, the Laprolat Road, where they, where they made the, the signs. Mm -hmm. They enhanced the signs. Uh -huh. And behind <coughs> the Dairy Queen, they enhanced that sign. Yep. Well, they forgot to do this one. They were going to do this, but they ran out of time. Okay. Oh, the sign on the Saley property, you mean? It, yes, it goes. Well, actually, uh, they this made is, a... This is your land. Yes. Take care of it. Yes, but it's connected to the Saley property land on Main Street. And one of the Boy Scout, that Eagle Scout, did make a beautiful sign, which subsequently fell over. They took it away. The Boy Scout's family was going to fix it up. No, that didn't do it. And uh, Tom, the state forest supervisor, made a stopgap sign there, which it's not as beautiful as the one the Boy Scout made. But hmm. well, I just like to leave these for a wake-up call because, like, do you know who dumps there? Pardon? Do you know who dumps at the end of Carpenter, Daniel Carpenter Court? Because I've been trying to get the dumping stopped there forever. It looks like all the landscapers in the, na in, the, in the town bring all their dumping there. There was one time, and I think maybe you, th you think, there was a person that came there with a bobcat, and he spent a couple of days. No, I didn't. And he ironed it out. You said that he volunteers to help sometimes for the conservation committee? No. At the end of Carpenter, Daniel Carpenter, no. That's, that's the only thing I can... Well, if he told you that, then he was, no. <laughs> oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> well, did Don't good. believe anybody. I'm trying to get them to take the stuff out of there and stop dumping because they're dumping it into a wetland. They're dumping what? They're dumping all <coughs> sorts of grass clippings and everything else in the wetland, and it's conservation land. Well, I can't attest for them. Uh, the two landscaping people we have, you know, the two that come with their $50 mowing your lawn story. Yeah. And they leave with the clippings. Okay. Keep your eye, keep your eyes open, and I want to. I want to stop whomever I, you know, I'm ready to put a camera up, but I don't want to have to go there. But that still doesn't get to this cleaning up of the sawed-off trees. Sawed-off trees. Now, whereabouts are those? At the very end of the road. See, I don't have anything against sawed-off trees because that's nature, natural, and if it's out of the path. No, no, I'd like to make some excuse for them, but it doesn't work that way. The tree service came with a truck and the big saws. And cut what? And they, they sawed the trees that, you know, that had fallen over. No, where about where they were? Daniel. Where they, they sawed them and okay, they left you know. them there. Mm. Broke them Just like that. And they're right here in the picture. Okay. Oh, I thought you were talking about all the dump piles at the end. Trees, trees um, provide habitat, and I'm not against trees as long as they're not blocking the, um, and that's just me. 
I don't know how the commission feels, but if they're not blocking the trail, they provide habitat to all sorts of critters. The trails are blocked. If they, you, you say they are? Yeah, if you go behind the Church of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. it used to have a trail that went up to the end of Daniel Carpenter, and it went from Daniel Carpenter up to it back at Dairy Queen. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, the entrance to Dairy Queen is no longer there. I was just there this evening to double check. And we well, got the, some, the we church. We got some picnic tables there. The, and, oh. And there's, the, I can't find the entrance that used to be there. Well, maybe it wasn't our property. I don't know where yeah. you're talking about. But yeah. um, the roadway that a goes. It's Staley property. It, it's all connected and behind. I know it, it is. Yeah. But the road that goes from the back of the church, uh, there's swamp on both sides, right? Right. Is that where you're talking about the tree being? No. The path in back of the church. It's lovely, but you can't go right for the fallen trees. You can't take a right and go back to Daniel Carpenter, which you oh. used to be able to do. Okay. Well, unfortunately, okay. we so don't have. Maybe they are black in the trails then, yeah. Who can cut those out? Open that out. Highway. Highway does that? Sometimes. Well, I can leave it. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, why don't you leave us? Yeah, it needs to be enhanced. I mean, <clears throat> well, nature isn't supposed to be pretty and neatly maintained, but I, I hear you. I'm more concerned about the the dumping that goes on at the end of your, of your road because that's mm -hmm. that's causing property. a lot of pollution yeah. into the wetlands oh, and the water quality and stuff. So, whoever's doing it, tell them to stop. <laughs> And we don't give permission to have people with bobcats go out there and flatten things out. Okay, I'm just going to leave these here. Uh, Please, may I see? Or maybe he wants to. Yeah. Thank you. The conservation that Homestead on Knott Street, it was the selection was volunteering there a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. They get a big grant from Schneider Electric. Yes. And we have all sorts of native plant. Um, Does Schneider do the side streets? <laughs> no, That's I don't think so. <laughs> Here, why don't you pass that down? Oh, no. um, yeah, they, we, uh, the selectmen and um, other friends of conservation got a really nice grant for retrofitting the area. So it's, it's got an all persons trail and it's got all these Boy yeah. Scout um, additions that are fantastic. and. Um, and let a native plant garden so people can see what, you know, why we're pushing the native plants and how they're it's helping a, the pollinators and, and the butterflies and all that sort of stuff. Yes, I used to have, uh, I had a few turtles come on the property. From where? Where you? From the pond. Yes, yes, that's a vernal pool and you probably have all sorts of critters living in there and I'd really like to see people stop filling it because you know what? I think people used to fill swamps because of the mosquitoes, but if you have a healthy swamp, all of the crit critters that love to eat mosquitoes are there and you can't, you know, it's not as bad for mosquitoes, surprisingly enough. Vernal pools especially, you get dragonfly larvae and things like that that eat the mosquito larvae. Nature's little mosquito eaters. So, it's all about education. You have a nice, you have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. you, you Thanks well. a lot. Thank you for coming in. <clears throat> uh, Jane, yeah. what is 157622 Route 1? Is that the mass dot? Yes. Okay. Yes. And I sent it around so there's an order of conditions and an attachment. Okay. For you to sign. <clears throat> Thank you. Did the state look at this? The state did, and they asked me to take off. Melissa's name as the owner because it, she shouldn't be on there. So it's the state. I don't know what But that was the only thing they said. I mean, it's just boilerplate, really. Okay, so I will make a motion to sign the order of conditions for 157622. Just I'll make uh, that motion. Make a question. Uh, when I was doing the minutes, did we have a discussion about when they're going to do the activity? on the bank and near the river relative to the turtles? Because uh, I think that's a timing I thing. I think they said the fall when, is when they're going to start. They're going to go for bid yeah. this year, try to start in the fall, but yeah. it, you know, most likely not. But then 
it'd be spring of 24. Hmm. And is that an issue for the turtles? I wasn't around for that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's because of the riverfront area. I don't know of any turtles that would necessarily be out and about at that time. The worst time for turtles is around the time that they're going. Um, they're traveling to breed in the <laughs> beginning of June or something. So they said that they're, they're using a time of year thing for wildlife or something, did they? I didn't I put it in there because I didn't know. No, I don't, I don't recall it. They didn't bring it up, but I thought we brought it up as a, you know, that would be the area of concern. The, uh, it would be the area of concern because it's a river. Right. But that's the main thing. I mean, it's, it's been altered in the past and such, so it's, for me, it's not a big red flag. The work's been done before, and mm -hmm. I don't know. I think they're going to be changing some of it or fixing some of it, but uh, it didn't jump out at me. Okay. So did we make a motion on that? Did we get it approved? Jim, <coughs> you need a second. Jim made the motion. Okay. Do second. I hear a second. <laughs> Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We got it. I have a request for order of conditions for 16 Garrett Spillane Road. For an amendment. Okay. The new owner C said he was going to be here, and uh, he's not here, I don't think. But not you. Hey, so the story, it's, the story it's was on Zoom. There's a guy on Zoom. Is he on Zoom? Oh yeah, I'm here on Zoom. You are. Okay. Oh good. Okay. Here, why don't you take one and pass? Oh, you have one. Take one, pass it on. So David and I went out and we spoke to um, Mr. Jordan, Ryan Jordan. Uh, we met with him at his house, and he said, gee, this looks be horrible back here. And we said, gee, we agree. It's supposed to be restored. Um, and he said, well, I would be happy to restore it and make it look nice. So I sent him all kinds of stuff, probably more than he could probably handle. But he's interested in yeah, planting thanks. the back slope, the, the vernal pool area, as had been promised um, by the builder. Um, in the area, he did the work in the first place, and uh, he likes the idea of it being native vegetation and such. So um, David and I did our little dog and pony show and told him what we thought could work. And um, this isn't exactly what we talked about, but it's it's relatively close. So <clears throat> on the um, on the sheet that he submitted, well, first of all, he su submitted a letter that talked about. <clears throat> excuse me, what he's going to do to restore the area. And he took from the lists that we gave him, and um, they look really good. And he's going to make it so that they can actually have a view of the vernal pool, because the water and the wildlife there is really nice. He actually sent me a picture of a pileated woodpecker that's living in one of the dead trees right at the base of this slope um, next to the vernal pool. And so he's going to put a lot... He, he said he'd like to... <clears throat> put in a um, meadow area above the yellow line, uphill from the yellow line, and some paths for, for walking. And, um, and then he's got these different zones where he's going to put different kinds of plants. Um, in zone C, it would help to shade the vernal pool and, um, you know, it contribute to the leaf litter in the vernal pool, which is the bottom of the food chain and all that sort of thing. So it looks really nice. And uh, David and I had talked about, <clears throat> David and I and you had talked about going out in that area that's disturbed already, that's relatively flat oh, at yeah. the back of the death. right side of your property, remember? Because right. we yep. said, give and take, he wants to have of course, he wants a place to be able to walk around his deck and mm -hmm. a place for his kids to get out to the area that's outside of the 100 foot um, to play and stuff or maybe play in the meadow. Um, but you didn't propose that. Remember we talked um, about that? That little natural um, 
what do you call it, Noel? Yeah, so that's, that's somewhat okay. included in the additional 10 feet from where the 100 foot buffer is. So it's really just to give a little space um, to separate uh, yard, I guess, and more uh, na native area separated with the split rail fence. So, so some areas it might not even be the full 10 feet, but it would kind of uh, where the deck is going to go on that top part, get push back a little bit there and then try to kind of run it, run it down at an, a natural angle to, so that we have some separation on that, that corner where it gets really tight. Um, so that was kind of the, the goal. Some of that area has been pretty well disturbed already. I don't know if it was from some of the rocks that were there or stumps coming out. So there's already some pretty big holes that, um, would need to be filled in a little bit there as well. So just trying to smooth it out, make it a little more livable and certainly restore that area and uh, remove the invasives and really make it a nicer, nicer place. I certainly have a, a vested interest in that at this yeah. point. Yeah, and uh, it would look nice, but we had discussed the place that you would widen it so that you'd have a little yard or a place to put a fire pit or something like that right, would yeah. be the area that is just a mess right now, and it's it's at the top of the hill. So that's what I was picturing, and then pulling it away just just enough basically to walk by the house um, at the corner and stuff, such. Um, probably not as quite as far as you pulled back, but... Um, that was just my impression of it. Um, so you don't necessarily want to use the go. I don't know if you all can see, but like right in here, you, if you watch, if you go to yep. the topography area there, he could flatten that out nicely and have a little <laughs> backyard for seating or a swing set or something like that. So I thought that was that was my impression. How about you? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because I have a similar situation at my house, and you have to want you want to be able to walk around your deck and around yeah. your house, and no, but no, it's not going to be a real play so area just, over there either. Right. Yeah, um, right. yeah. Jane, yeah. I haven't been out there in quite a while. Um, is the ground. natural vegetation okay. tried to come up through the wood chips and? Uh, not so much. There's some grasses, yep. but there's also an awful lot of those darn what are they dewberries that are little <coughs> prickly monsters that kind of fan out everywhere mm -hmm. under, on the low low lying. So there's there's a lot of invasive stuff in there and the deer are coming back and eating the plants again. And oh, okay. Well, uh, it appears that about 70% of what was planted uh -huh. is still there and growing. There's oh. only a few of them that the deers tore the bark <clears throat> off of. Yeah. So and the problem is he put a lot of pines there, which is not necessarily going to make the best view for them. So mm -hmm. I suggested sticking the pines off to the side and digging them up while he still could. Yeah. Either that or just limbing them up a bit when they get really tall. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, I explained the whole needs for the vernal pools. Yeah. And uh -huh. we actually went down to the vernal pool and I said, well, you know, you might see something now. We might see some yeah. fairy shrimp, don't you know? Really, they were pretty good sized fairy shrimp. Oh, good. All over the place. It's going to oh. be a good crop this year. Good. We're starting to see sa uh, saplings uh, coming out on some of the old stumps. Oh, okay. And then there's some natural wooded vegetation. It's going to take a while to actually grow. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's starting to show. Okay. That's well, looking so. sad, and he wants to do most of the work himself. So mm -hmm. the whole knowledge is power thing. I send him a yeah. whole lot of information. How'd you like the inspirational photos? <laughs> yeah, I thought they were great. Um, I like the look of it. Certainly better than how it looks back there right now. So um, something that is probably going to take some time and figure out what works back there and try to, you know, keep everything native. Um, so certainly uh, a learning curve here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I'm excited for it. So yeah, and he's a birder, too. So he understands how important this sort of okay. habitat is. Good. Who knows? Maybe you'll get some meadow larks or something crazy like that. Oh. Probably not. Maybe bluebirds, though. Yeah. Um, so we recommended that he uh, 
come up with a map, show them what he would like to do, and they mm -hmm. have an understanding yeah. of you know, what's out there, and also a plan. Yep, uh, we've got the plan. And that goes before the board, because this was such a big issue of that 100 foot. Mm -hmm. And this, yeah. what he's showing here is probably a little bit bigger than, the, wider than what we were talking about out there in the field. That's my notes from yeah. my memory. <clears throat> he's got the right idea. Right. Okay. Um, right. And uh, yep. he's, he's got the little, ambition to do this stuff. This is a little wider than what we thought. Mm. Um, what about, did you put bounds in there? I don't remember, except for the, he's gonna, he was proposing a split rail fence along the brown. The um, brown line. Line, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I haven't put in, I haven't down, put any down, bounds down. out other than what's already there, which is the existing the hundred foot. So broken. Yeah. Happy to stake some things out there. Wanted to just kind of get everyone's thoughts where we stand and try to get a lot of this taken care of. Um, we're getting I don't know somewhat ready I guess in the spring to start doing some landscaping and uh, get a crew out there, pull the invasives, and try to kind of get a, a pretty good jump on, uh, you know, finishing off the, the project and also a good jump on continuing with the restoration project back there, I think is my goal at this point. Yeah, and we talked about not doing very much filling of holes and... Um, excavating or, or, you know, moving dirt around. And uh, mm -hmm. with the exception of the, the large rocks, I mean, you were gonna put them up near the top, but the large rocks part way down the slope, I'm not certain about that, but I mean, I could, we could, I, I could always go out there again, David, and go over where you're proposing that line to be, but the, the idea is there for sure. Mm. So do you have people who know how to get rid of these invasive critters just pulling them? I believe so, yes. Okay, because that's, that's a bear. I did that at my own place a, a few years back, and it, I won the battle, but there were a lot of casualties. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not sure I'll go that one alone, so I may get a crew back there and just yeah. uh, okay. make yeah. sure they pull the right things out. Well, when they do it, we probably, you probably should, I don't know, the commission might agree, you should probably have one of us yeah. kind of there to point and say, no, that's not good or that is okay type of thing. It would be good yeah. to notify yeah. the office when you're ready to start and uh, give us a start date and then we can have somebody give you some assistance there. But the concept is good, yes. Yeah. Now, yes. the thing about yeah. this is we had so many iterations of the restoration plan, and then it got to the point where um, Scott just threw his hands up and said, I'm not going to do any kind of work in that area. Yeah. Um, well, so the, all you have is a bylaw. in that area to begin with. Oh, but. I know, I know. So there was a bylaw order of conditions only, and it's yeah. basically for no, no work except to restore yeah. part of the area. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's already done there, and I think yeah. making a little... We had talked about making a little wider path for walking and mm. such because, you know, you don't want to yep. be ridiculous, but you don't. It's hard not to get carried away sometime, too, especially if you have someone doing the work. Yep. Yeah, I, I don't um, I don't think we would go uh, certainly overboard. I don't want a giant um, backyard, but I, do, I have three kids, so I do need some area. Preferably level area in the back or the side. Um, well, we right now it's side. ending up mm -hmm. just the way the grading and the septic and everything is set up. Yep. It's a little steeper than I, I envisioned it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to continue to preserve. There's some other area in the woods back there that I guess hypothetically could be cleared out, but I, I would rather not do that i think we certainly have enough area to work with what we have back there so with what's already been cleared 
Yeah, we talked about how, you know, one of the things he likes about this lot is it's a dead end, and all of the kids will probably end up playing on the dead end, and then the area adjacent to the dead end is the part that's just outside of the 100-foot buffer, which is something that is fine and dandy for him yeah. to do, whatever. But that's why we talked about that little knoll at the far right-hand side of the top of the hill because <coughs> we were stressing... Um, that we didn't really want to have a whole lot of, you know, machinery or, or leveling or things like that. Um, the back area is an area that it, it's the result of a violation, wetlands violation. So <laughs> this is very, very touching. A, po a positive step. It's a very right. positive step. Yeah. And we're not holding it against him, but it's unfortunately... <laughs> <laughs> what he bought, you know, yeah. it's uh, an area that was restricted. But he seemed pretty excited about yeah. Good. that. It and sounds... it's going to stay a little steep, though, I think. Yes, it's going to stay steep. Uh, yes. Yeah. Nature of the beast. Mother Nature created. And they'll be able to uh, go sledding yes. down on top of the <laughs> vernal pool ice. Yeah. What are the gray circles? Are those boulders to be put in? Yes. And that's all filled in in between the two boulders? Well, if you, if you, he explained, yeah, if you go back there, it's kind, of a, it's kind of a hole back there right now. Um, so I guess in my mind, I don't even know if we would really need to do that. Yeah, yeah. This is my, <laughs> my amateur rendering here. Um, That's pretty good. So I thought maybe a little uh, stone wall there in order to kind of hold some of the soil in for it to be level. But um, I guess this is my first uh, first go round here, and again, just kind of wanted to get everyone's thoughts. And happy to walk back there again and and just rehash it out and uh, see what we we can and cannot do. Maybe get some stakes in the ground. Because if you talk about adding um, like a rough stone wall area, you're getting more into that 100 feet. Not to say that's a bad thing, because the creatures that are breeding in that vernal pool would probably love to live under big rocks. But it is still considered an encroachment into, into that area. I mean, if it's just a big rock here or there, like we discussed, that's different. So, yeah. Um, I would recommend Actually, going out there and the, putting some flags up for okay. him for the edge so that people right. don't get that carried away. Now, what size boulders are you talking about here? Are they uh, maneuverable by hand, or do, are you thinking of bringing them some equipment in there to move them? Um, I don't think the equipment would actually go past whatever area that, that you approve. Uh, okay. Pretty sure they could just grab onto them, place them down there without having to further go into the area. So that was kind of my thought. Um, I can't tell, again, what was already disturbed in that area and what, what wasn't and what was there. Um, but right now, just in that back corner of my house which is a, a walkout um it almost wa walks out into a so there's a tiny little area there but it would be nice to have a little more and have it somewhat flat i guess or even maybe step down into a flatter area so um i don't know really how much we need there five or ten feet um, in order just to kind of make it a little bit of a better finished product back there. Um, so, okay, but, yeah. okay, you still didn't say what size boulders are, that you were talking about. Are they uh, two feet in diameter, three feet, or smaller, or larger? Yeah, I would say, yeah, two, three feet. I don't think they're... With the machinery, I don't know. We there's we could probably put any any size we really want back there, but 
Um, I think just enough to build a little wall, uh, have it retain the soil. And um, I don't think they would have to be humongous boulders by, by all means. I guess my concern is uh, what size machinery you're talking about getting into the buffer area. Well, uh, he wouldn't be able to put any in the buffer. So yeah, well, that's what, that's, yeah, that's what I'm driving. I don't want to see. Well, don't just dance around it. Just say no machinery in the buffer <laughs> zone in the hundred foot. Yeah. Um, because yeah, I'm pretty sure we could just require. lift them, lift them down in there and the, they have the buckets with a claw on it. They can just grab the boulders, lay them in place and try to do minimal uh, we would definitely have to have disturbance. definite boundaries for yes. that. Yes, Ground. very definitely. Because I know someone who likes to place boulders along the edge and just push. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think before that portion, we need a site visit. Uh, yeah, I think all the rest sounds great. Yes, yeah. But I, he definitely I, need a definite boundary of where, down, yeah. beyond which limit you cannot alter the soil yeah okay so we um, did, except we except to remove invasives and plant plants by hand we're asking for a staked out area so we can clearly see yes what the intention yeah he's going to yeah. need that for yeah. sure but I mean uh, great first stab and um, yeah. I think that we can we can definitely make you a um, poster child that'd be great yeah yeah so um, appreciate the time. I will, um, stake out the area, kind of what I'm thinking and, um, what, what should I do from there? Give me a call. I'll come out. Um, and also it's almost time to show your kids vernal pool stuff. Are you in the house yet? No, uh, probably looking at June ish. Well, the vernal pool season starts at the end of March and the beginning of April, and the critters start moving and making lots of noise and laying eggs, and it's great fun. So, you know, I'm happy to come down and play and show <laughs> the kids about that. She likes playing in vernal pools. Yep. I like playing in the mud. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome to come down, and uh, I showed them the book. They already like going through and kind of seeing all the critters, the salamanders, the frogs, and uh, I think they'll probably be back there playing Excellent. quite a bit. They'll probably get to know every frog that lives there. <coughs> My son used to know every frog. Good. That sounds great. So the next step, so the next step you can do anytime you want is to get that, um, the invasives pulled out, and if you need help seeing, you know, determining which is which, Obviously, when you have some crew in there to pull out those nasty vines, um, you really should probably have someone who really knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And and I can kind of point things out if you want. Yeah, ha David, happy to have you there. Um, I'll just have to coordinate with the landscaper and um, try to kind of figure out what we can can't do and then um get everyone lined up so uh that is uh tbd i guess depending on everyone's schedule but i'll certainly keep you posted once i know more there that's great and i'm happy yeah. to come out and point those things out to you um and the commission usually says no nothing except for hand tools and you know by hand no machinery, really. Mm -hmm. Muscles. Well, hmm. So with that, do we want to sign the order of conditions that he's presented? Uh, it's not, no, it's not something to sign. He just wanted to get your input okay. and your blessing and okay. wanted to go from there because I thought, you know, what we talked about, mm -hmm. I said, I'm all for it, but, you okay. know, the, I don't vote either. The commission right. is the one to vote, so... so. If you give him his blessing, he could, you could start the invasives removal and planting native plants by hand, and uh, then we, you want to make sure you just take out the invasives. Though. Have a site visit for anybody else, yeah. because uh, 
the fencing is still up, or they're definitely with a hundred foot line. Is you could okay. tell right off the bat out there. All right. Good. So good. Um, but yeah, and and if you can plot out approximately the area that you would want, or that you know we would want, is the limit of work. So limit of work would mean limit of machinery. Yeah. And then I can yeah. come out and check it, or David, or someone else. Okay. Sure. Uh, happy to do that. I can get out there pretty quickly, and then I'll just um, check in with you, you Jane, and um, maybe schedule a site visit for whoever wants to come out. Sounds good. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. This is great. Um, yeah, I'll excited. get to work. I'm excited about uh, getting this done. Just want to thank everyone. So appreciate the time, Jane. Um, thanks uh, for coming out and uh, looking forward to working together. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Yep. All right. Maybe we'll make lemonade out of that lot after all. We want all. that lemonade. <laughs> We haven't awesome. had enough of it lately. Get get a lot of lemons. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, do we want to talk about the letter to the DEP, or we want to? Well, that's changed a little bit. So let me redraft yeah. it. Okay. And refocus it to. All right. And then people can comment. All right. Go. From okay. There. Great. All right. Uh, Willow Street. The town has taken. Some land. Yeah, Willow Street has sent you all the stuff, and I quickly filled out the sheet that we went into uh, exhaustive review of, of putting together this uh, land donation um, policy and process. Um, this particular lot, um, I've been saying I want it for a long time now. Mm -hmm. The only yeah. problem is the, the decrepit old barn that's on it. Um, I suspect there's a rental pool in the back that our friend Ron used to um, put fish in, oh. which hopefully they can't survive for long term, but um, for fishing. Hmm. For fishing, so the shiners, you know. It was quite a little pond back there. I didn't yeah. realize it was. That I'd much like water. to do a site visit back there. Yeah, if we can. yeah, I would too, because I've seen it from the fringes, but I haven't crossed over the, pro the, the conservation the land. The border land, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I know you had problems with it in the past because they put a big, uh, like a culvert or something yeah, for the intermittent Yeah, they culvert in the stream. middle of the field. Yeah. They, they uh, walked the horses right. around. There? No. There's a river running right straight yeah. through the center yeah. of it. So, Those pictures um, are great, thank you. Yeah. When you it's not far from you, get so. back into the office, we can schedule a site visit. We don't okay. have to do it this week. All right, well, who knows what my life's gonna be like. It's um, yeah. kind of up in the air. Okay. But uh, just to get the ball rolling and have you all say, yes, we would love it. Yes. Um, and then maybe then we'd need to get public safety there. involved if they wanted to do yeah. a, another, It's been a while you know, since I've been out there. Burn. Is it just the yeah. piece that's a, so comes where the barn is? Piece. It's not the yes. house that's It's not collapsed. the house across the way, is, which I don't understand. I but a horse yeah. barn in there that's... Because yeah, we used to, we inherited a horse at one point, and we stabled her down there. You did. Yeah. So you're ago. familiar with the property then? Uh, yeah, I was. Yeah, I was. Uh, so I didn't remember the stream going right through the uh, the trotting stable. I remember reading now. about that, and it's, I think right it was a big brouhaha way back when with the commission. Yes. Um, I, do you remember the year? No. I, I don't remember the year. I was not here. Yeah. Okay. Thankfully. I, Yes. Is that the barn here? Um, so, because it would be a transfer there. from the not. town yeah. general oh. purpose to permanently protecting it under the Conservation Commission Act, mm -hmm. um, I'm not exactly certain how to go about doing that. But to get the ball rolling, yeah. you guys would want it, yes? Yes. Yeah, I Absolutely. figured you would. Mm -hmm. That's. Uh, with the uh, proximity to the Canoe River. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, alrighty. Anything else? Good for me. 
We Anything have this, from the audience before we adjourn? We have this character over oh, here yeah, who sure. wants to. Sure, I'll, do, can I do it from here? No, you need. OK, fine. I, I, this is only the second one of these meetings I've ever been to. And uh, I should have come to lots of them because I'm uh, interested in conservation and uh, environment in a big way. Um, I don't think many people in Foxborough are really very interested in the environment whatsoever. I, uh, conversation almost never comes up in the 35 years that I've lived here. And uh, we're interested in a lot of things, football and all that stuff. And I'm grateful for the Conservation Commission and all the work that you do. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope we can engage the public more. And I've, I think it's ridiculous that somebody like me who's spent his life in conservation is at this meeting for only the second time. <laughs> I, I wish the room were full of people. Uh, but I can't uh, say too much about it because, again, it's my second meeting in 30 years. No board of selectmen. <laughs> won't be the last. Won't be the last one. I came tonight to 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 remember what Jane looked like because I talked to Jane recently about going out. And to, I'm glad you took your mask to look off for too. To look, to look for turtles, <laughs> I just showed her a turtle egg that I found today. It wasn't in Foxborough, but it's an egg of a um, musk turtle, which is a secretive little turtle. Those are supposedly the smallest um, uh, hatchlings of the turtle species in this area. Right, so there you go. They only lay four or five eggs. And I actually found this in Medfield, but I didn't find it here, but it's a secretive thing. And it mucks, it hangs around. It's only about that big. It's called a stink pot, too. Um, anyway. Is it is the egg viable, or is it? Uh, I, I don't. Fossilized me. Uh huh. I don't know, but I don't know much well, about it. Well, you know what? It Moving water, it around, it's it not water. going to be happy because if it was a real viable turtle egg, you can't. You have to keep them exactly how they were laid. Right. So, <laughs> so, uh, so, so, see, I have a lot to learn about turtles. I actually wrote a book once about amphibians, but I didn't write anything about reptiles. So uh, I'm going to try to see all the reptiles and amphibians that live in New England this year. Um, and that's going to take me up to northern Maine and uh, north, northwestern Vermont. Cool. But, but I think that probably Foxborough is as good a place for reptiles and amphibians as any town in New England. And I think that Foxborough has more species of turtles than any town in Massachusetts. Uh, I said to Jane earlier uh, that um, over the phone that um, Perhaps Plymouth has as many species, eight species of turtles, but Plymouth has, how big is Foxborough? How many square miles? 15? Is it 20 something? 20? I, don't know. I should know. But, I just wrote the open space plan. Yeah. <laughs> so Plymouth is 100 square miles. Oh, it's wow. the biggest town in eastern Massachusetts. So, so they have, they got us square mile wise. But uh, we, we, have, we have lots of wonderful stuff here. We, we, the butterflies are suffering in Foxborough to a great extent since I moved here. Butterfly population is much worse. I don't know about everywhere. the Everywhere. Moth, not everywhere, but. In, Many places around here. In, yeah, well, in Foxborough specifically, all the good butterfly habitat uh, has disappeared uh, under the plow. Um, but um, but uh, I hope I'm not moving from Foxborough. And I hope to learn a lot of, more about the reptiles and amphibians. And I hope to come to some more of these meetings. I'm not trying to be a gadfly. I really, really appreciate all the stuff that, <laughs> uh, the stuff that you do. I will ask questions when, I, when they need to be asked. And uh, thank you for asking me to come up and say something. So, Thank you for you, you're saying that we do a good job. <laughs> you appreciate everything that they do. I do. <laughs> yes, come here all the time and say that, please. Sure. Sure, we've got to fill the audience. We have to fill the room sometime, though. What fills the room? <laughs> hey, Abby. Oh, hey, Mr. contentious no. things? You don't no. want to come when yes. the room is filled, yes. Yep. That's right. Well, there's a lot of talk about plants tonight, but hardly any talk about animals. So. In due time. Just fairy shrimp tonight. Yes. Fairy shrimp? That's yeah. right. And affiliated yeah. woodpecker, sure which is out. a fantastic bird. Yeah. He has affiliated woodpecker. He sent me a really beautiful picture. Because, yeah. yeah. um, you know, I'm always saying, dead wood is good wood, and this is why. And uh, I said, you want to leave things like that? So you I, I, have them. If you don't mind, I, have, I do have one question about your reluctance to put up a camera. And why, if, if, if this is a, 
I mean, the guy brings in some pictures from tree that were cut down seven years ago. And, and he doesn't and even notice the piles of all the grass? <laughs> and he did, no, that's not, what, that's not the point I was going to make. The point I was going to make is you guys don't know anything about these, seven, <clears throat> about these trees that have been cut down for seven years. And you're worried about the, the grass that's being dumped there, which is a good I thing to worry know. about. But, why have to put up a camera? I mean, this room is full of cameras. It's not like we're against cameras. Well, and then there's the whole enforcement issue. Yeah, yeah. they get stolen. <clears throat> Unfortunately. You, you get a big ladder, and you put one up, way up in the tree. They Don't took they... the chip from the camera that I had up. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's my bad. They're very creative. You've got to be able to get it closed them. Yeah. Or put it in a bear box. Bear box. Yeah, I, I learned a lot of interesting things <clears throat> about the people doing naughty things at one of our conservation properties. <clears throat> yeah. Well, what do you do about it? Well, I don't know. I, w I was once asked by the town of Attleboro to go and, and assess all their, uh, all their uh, town uh, conservation properties. And I came back and told them that it was, it was a disgrace. <laughs> that the, their properties were a disgrace. They were all dump sites. Every single one of them was a dump site. And they really didn't like that. They gave <laughs> me some money and they told me to get lost. <laughs> <laughs> They have to do something about it. Really, they, had so, they have a lot of conservation properties and mm -hmm. at the end of these roads, and, and they, nobody watches them, and everybody comes down and dumps all their clippings. Well, see, that's, I, I'm, that's one of the things I'm tasked with that doing is keeping here. the conservation lands, making sure they're okay. So when I do occasionally go out in the conservation lands, which isn't very often because, heaven forbid, I should have fun and, and go play in the woods. Right. Um, whenever I see people on them, I will talk to them and I'll encourage them to be one of my unofficial stewards. Good. And I have a long list of unofficial stewards and these people are awesome because they tell me if there's a problem and I say, okay, let's see how we can fix that. But they also pick up the trash and they, you know, they remind people that the dogs need to be on a leash and pick up after them and I, so I rely on the stewards in this town. The unofficial right. list. You can so, be one of them if you'd like. Thank you very much. You I, may I, already be, actually. I've never seen anybody pick up a piece of trash in Foxborough. Oh, go to the Lane property. Never. I, I went to the Lane property earlier uh, last fall and picked up six giant bags full of trash over by the... Was that you who over left by, that? Over by the waterfall. I call up the town to come to pick it up. I drag the bags out. People stood on the spillway and watched me pick up the trash. Nobody volunteered to come down and pick up the trash. I know a that people, people pick up the it. trash in Foxborough on one day a year. There's a special day when you go out and pick up yeah. the trash. But the other 364 days, nobody picks up the trash, <laughs> unless you guys do it. No, nobody picks up trash, Jane. They don't. Well, no, so, they do. It's, can you imagine how much trash there would be out there if they didn't? Because a lot of people do, honestly. They okay. Do. <laughs> Jane's going to show me some reptiles and amphibians, so I have to stay on a good side. <laughs> <laughs> Which I hope I have. Uh, oh, absolutely. Anyway, thank you. If I'm keeping your meeting going, yeah. then uh, I'm going to go, and your meeting can adjourn. Thank you very much. Cool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the uh, comic relief. That was nice. <laughs> uh, sorry, yeah, Ron's a great guy. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a I'll call on the way out. Ready? There you go. That was good. <laughs> common bird in Foxborough. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's common, yeah. I did an owl survey in Foxborough once uh, in the month of October and found 126 owls in Foxborough. That's a and good. And when you consider that we have Route 1 and Route 495 and Route 95 and Route 140 and all the traffic noise, there are a lot more owls than that. Mm -hmm. A lot more owls and hawks here. Sometime I'll come and give you a, 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 a talk about owls. Okay. Nice. That's all right. Yeah, that was good. I wish I could do that. I have a, I have a, um, I have a whistle that I use, and I, I can make that noise, and it makes the cats go and run. <laughs> okay. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to adjourn the hearing. We should the encourage meeting. you to file Second. an application. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Good night, Mr. Beck.